If you're thinking about moving to Santa Barbara, I made this video for you. I'm Joe Parker with the Santa Barbara Group Berkshire Hathaway Real Estate, and we're gonna go explore Santa Barbara's top 12 neighborhoods right now. So without any further ado, let's go get into it. All right, we're kicking off our tour of 12 neighborhoods in Santa Barbara. We're over here on the east side, which is closest to Montecito. The next neighborhood over is Montecito, and this is a classic little kind of entry-level neighborhood for Santa Barbara. It consists of smaller homes, smaller lots, higher density, but you're gonna get into Santa Barbara at probably the least expensive price that you could find for a home. So the east side is great for that entry-level shopping. It's also great for investments because it's highly rentable. You have great proximity to the beach, downtown. It's not super close. The beach is pretty close. Downtown, not super close, but it's all flat. So it's an easy walk or an easy bike ride if that's where you wanna go. This neighborhood actually happens to be a neighborhood I grew up in as a kid. There's a creek over here. We used to play in the creek all the time, walk up to school. I used to ride my bike BMX in that field before there was even homes there. So really cool little, uh, little spot here. And if you follow it all the way down, you've got Milpa Street, which is the east side's kind of uh, commercial district where you could find restaurants and some stores. You got Trader Joe's over there, Sprouts. So lots of variety to choose from. So those are some of the characteristics of the east side. Another great feature of living on the east side is this community library right behind me. It's adjacent to Franklin School, and you can go there, obviously get your books, but there's also community events that happen here. They have an event center there that, um, a room that hosts all kinds of great things that help support the community. So definitely a great asset for the east side. All right, so we got out of the car so I could show you the views from the Upper Riviera, which is probably its most amazing asset. This neighborhood here clearly perched above downtown Santa Barbara. You can see the Mesa over there. I can see the harbor, the breakwater, Stearns Wharf. It's all right there. So that's the main reason why people love living up here. You also get more kind of spacious homes with bigger lots on the Upper Riviera compared to the Lower Riviera, which we'll go to next. The Upper Riviera also has some great community assets like the Riviera Theater, the El Encanto Hotel, which is really high-end, amazing. They have a restaurant that's overlooking all of this that you see behind me, so you could perch down at a really nice restaurant, have some drinks, some really nice food. That's a great, great spot, the El Encanto Hotel. We're up at Franceschi Park now. This is a great representation of the type of views you get when you're living on the Upper Riviera. All this down below here, Santa Barbara, the Riviera, the harbor, all of this is great. Now, some of the downsides of being this high up, as you can see, it's really far away. So to get over to the freeway or into town, you're looking at a good 10 minutes, maybe even as much as 15 if there's a lot of cross town traffic. So that's one thing to consider. Also, the roads aren't super walkable. They're kind of tight, they're windy. You gotta kind of do your S turns to get down. And it's not the best for walking on. Plenty of the neighbors and, and community members do go out on walks, but I do hear stories about how they almost get hit by cars because there's a lot of blind turns and there's not sidewalks. So a couple things to consider about if you're honing in on the Upper Riviera. All right, now we are on the Lower Riviera. This is below Alameda Padre Serra. This is the section that is a little bit closer into town. As you can see, town is not too far away, so that's definitely a benefit of the Lower Riviera. It is a bit more dense. You'll find that the homes can be a little bit closer together. The streets still very similar to the Upper Riviera. They're narrow and windy. They tend to S-turn and snake their way up the mountains here, so you've got that kind of to and from. But being on the Lower Riviera, it's a little shorter, so that's really nice. One of the negatives that I find with the Lower Riviera in particular are some of the power lines you'll find in the views. You're always drawn to these great city views, which also show up at nighttime when all the lights are on over the city. It's really beautiful. But the power lines that you see in the daytime can be a little bit of a turnoff. So it is individualized. Each home has their, their specific location and maybe their specific uh, number of power lines in the view. So you could kind of take that case by case, but something to look out for if you're shopping for a home in the Lower Riviera. Other than that, it's really a, an amazing place to live. Um, the to and from is still a little bit tight to get across town, but all in all, really, really nice spot. Drop into downtown in about four minutes um, and be in the assets of the Upper Riviera that we saw up there, the Riviera Theater and the El Encanto, not too far away. And uh, also the Santa Barbara Mission and the Rose Garden over here. So great little spot. 
Now I'm in downtown Santa Barbara. Another option for you to consider as far as Santa Barbara neighborhoods go. As you can imagine, being downtown, you're gonna be a bit more concentrated. There's a higher density, um, less parking. The street parking tends to fill up, but you do have a variety of real estate options to choose from. There's these luxury townhomes, like what's behind me right here that you could find around town, scattered in different areas. You could also find some older ones that aren't quite as nice or as expensive. There's also a variety of other types of homes in downtown, like little cottages that are kind of cute. You could find um, multifamily here. So basically anything's available if you want to be in downtown. The benefits, you've got great walkability, plenty of sidewalks, you've got plenty of restaurants, theaters, museums, all kinds of great things to go to on foot. You also have the beach not too far away, so if you got on your bike and you went down there, you could get down to the beach in about five minutes. Downtown is full of great opportunities and activities that if you're into that kind of active lifestyle, that kind of um, busy lifestyle, it could be the spot for you. Now we're on the Upper East Side of Santa Barbara on this 12 neighborhood Santa Barbara tour. The Upper East Side, one of my favorite neighborhoods because it's got a lot of historical character, a lot of really nice big homes. This was the original area where the wealthy, the elite lived in Santa Barbara. So this was the spot and you could see it today. You could see a lot of the old estates still standing, they've been rehabbed, but they maintain all that old architecture. There's a lot of sandstone walls throughout the neighborhood, a lot of just really cool features. It's close to downtown, you're only a few blocks away. The other things that are in the neighborhood include the Mission and the Santa Barbara Rose Garden, which is a great spot for picnics, is becoming very popular over the weekend. There's great sidewalks to walk, so you got that covered in this neighborhood. You've got a great elementary school called Roosevelt Elementary School that a lot of families love sending their kids to. So there's just a lot of great things going on. It's not too far from the freeway, but you do have to traverse across town a little bit to get to it. And I keep bringing that up because the freeway is kind of the main way to get up and down around town. So a lot of locals use it just to traverse town. So something to consider when you're trying to pick a neighborhood. But beyond that, it's hard to find many faults about the Upper East Side. Maybe the expensiveness, the popularity, make it um, a little bit challenging to get into if uh, if you don't have a lot of money um, so that's one thing to consider and uh, um, definitely a spot you may want to consider if you're looking at Santa Barbara so now we're in Mission Canyon this neighborhood is perched above the Santa Barbara Mission and uh, just over from the Upper East Side uh, the Riviera drops down into the Mission and then Mission Canyon starts to get your bearings so Mission Canyon, similar to the Riviera, is a foothill community. You can see behind me up here, these houses that are gonna be experiencing some really nice views up there. You get a cool perspective with the mission in the foreground. The seminary behind the mission is also in the foreground where it produces a nice tower. The romantic nature of this neighborhood is that you could hear the mission bells when they ring, so that's really sweet. It is a little bit of an eclectic neighborhood, so you do get a, a hodgepodge mix of styles of homes, keptness of homes. You know, some of them can be um, a little bit dated and, and um, dilapidated. Others, super fixed up, really nice. Price ranges anywhere from uh, like 1.2 up to possibly 4 million. So it's a, a little bit more affordable as compared to the Riviera as far as shopping for a view home. And um, you have a little bit less of a view potential because you're not gonna get that full city view, but you do get some really cool angles and some cool perspectives. So like the Riviera, the streets are windy and a bit narrow, so you don't have a lot of sidewalks. The parking, similar to the Riviera, is challenging. You don't have a lot of street parking. If you're gonna have a big party at your house, often this is gonna be a challenging spot for you to live, I think, because uh, it's hard for all your guests to park and get into your house for the party. So just some things to consider uh, when it's time to be shopping here in Mission Canyon. Not for everybody, but there are definitely some really nice aspects of it. One other thing I was just thinking about is that it's a little bit detached, um, similar to being up in the Riviera where you gotta drive and traverse to get through town. Some people feel like that's also uh, the case here, which, which it is. I think when you're talking to people about taking five minutes or 10 minutes to drive into town from out of Santa Barbara, they're like, what's the big deal? But once you live in Santa Barbara for a while, you get kind of spoiled and that becomes kind of a big deal. So something to consider. It's not super close to everything, but it's actually not that far. It's, it's, it's kind of right in the mix. So let's go to the next neighborhood.
All right, we're in San Roque, one of Santa Barbara's most popular neighborhoods, especially for families because of just the friendly nature of it all. There is great trick-or-treating in the Halloween time. There's also really cool decorations during Christmas time. But the main reason that people love this neighborhood so much, I think because of the school districts, there's two really good elementary schools. You've got Peabody Elementary in Monte Vista, very popular with families. You also have great homes, walkable neighborhoods. You've got Stevens Park, which is a great asset to the neighborhood, which allows you to get up into our front country. You could hike trails, but also just hang out in the park. They have a creek and stuff. You also have access to Upper State Street, not too far away, especially if you're further from the foothills. The neighborhood is huge. It's really big. It goes all the way up to the foothills down to State Street. So if you get closer to State Street, you're closer to striking those restaurants and shops, coffee shops, delis, all this great stuff on Upper State Street. So it gives good walkability. So San Roque really gives you a little bit of everything. You got that walkability. You could get up into the mountains, you get into town. It is a little bit, um, more expensive than most neighborhoods because of its popularity. So you go, you do have a little bit of a premium price point to be here in San Roque. Um, that could be one of the negatives. Other than that, it's just a really pleasant place to live that a lot of people find where they want to land whenever they shop in Santa Barbara. I get buyers saying that San Roque is where they want to be. So something we can definitely explore further if you think that this could be the neighborhood for you. San Roque neighborhood has this great park, Stevens Park, where I'm standing right here. You can see killer playground, lots of benches for picnic tons of oak trees, boulders. It has a beautiful creek running through it, which is flowing right now because we've been getting a ton of rain. And it's also the beginning of a hiking spot here. If you just continue up, you'll go underneath the bridge, which is Foothill Highway up there behind us. And then you can make your way all the way up to our front country trails from this park right here. So when you're living in San Roque, not only do you have access to Upper State Street and all that cool commercial space with restaurants and shops and things, you also have access to this open space, this park, which leads right into Santa Barbara's foothills for hiking, really special. Another popular up and coming neighborhood in Santa Barbara is the Hidden Valley neighborhood. This is over adjacent to Las Positas as it makes its way to Arroyo Borough Beach. Really nice neighborhood that is characterized by some rolling small hills throughout the neighborhood so it's not completely flat. There's also plenty of sidewalks to get out and walk with your neighbors or your dog. Plus there's a lot of mature trees that keep a lot of shade on a hot sunny day. Hidden Valley can be a little bit cooler than other neighborhoods because it does sit down in a bowl kind of behind Campanile Hill. So it's a little bit shaded and some of the marine influence I've noticed likes to settle in in that neighborhood. It's in the Adams Elementary School attendance area and there's a new bike path that leads you right down to the beach along a nice little nature trail. So a lot of things that are becoming really popular about the Hidden Valley neighborhood. Now we're in Hope Ranch, Santa Barbara's most exclusive community. This is where you will find properties that can range in price from 3 million up to 50 million. It's quite shocking and the extent of some of the wealth that's here in Hope Ranch is mind boggling. To get into it, the starters are about an acre of land, a fixer of a home, maybe about $3 million. Now, Hope Ranch is really special because it has a lot of amenities. You do pay an association fee annually, but what you get with that fee is bridle trails, 26 miles I think it is, of horseback riding trails. They have tennis courts. They also have a private beach. That's probably the most sought after and coveted item of the Hope Ranch Association. That private beach in the summertime is an amazing social experience. Everyone's hanging out there. You could store your kayaks there, your stand-up paddle. They have lifeguards that hang out there. They have cabanas. It's a real scene. It's really, really fun. So that's really special. What else do they got in here? Hope Ranch has patrol. They have the Hope Ranch patrol that goes around. Now, some of the negatives about Hope Ranch, it's expensive obviously, but that probably doesn't matter to you if you're shopping in Hope Ranch, but it is quite spendy. Also, it's on septic in here, so you got septic tanks to deal with, and when those go out and you gotta remodel them, the county of Santa Barbara is pretty strict about what you need to put in there. You're gonna be putting in the top of the line most expensive ones. So 
those are some things to consider. Also, there's a lot of association stuff that people don't want to use, so they don't want to pay for it, but it comes with a real exclusive neighborhood, and it's really close to, obviously, the beach, because you got Hope Ranch Beach, but Upper State Street is not far away, right over there towards the mountains. But you do get some homes that have some vistas, like off in the distance behind me, you can see some of them are elevated. I'm looking over here, there's some rolling hills that are elevated as well, and all of them are just covered in these native oaks, so lots of shade, not a lot of traffic, so really a special spot and has become more and more popular, I'd say, over the last three years. Hope Ranch and Montecito are kind of the two high-end areas of our uh, community here on the south coast of Santa Barbara County, and Hope Ranch is definitely catching up to being as popular as Montecito, but not quite. Montecito's always got the cachet, but Hope Ranch is really nice. Oh, on a side note, really quickly, this course that we're on right here. This is Lacumba Country Club. Some people drive through Hope Ranch and it looks like this is a part of your dues that you're paying for and that you get this, but no, actually it costs extra and it costs a lot extra, but you could join and become a member here at Lacumba Country Club. You got this golf course, social membership, there's rackets, uh, a, a racket club membership, I think, where you got tennis and everything. So a lot of options there, but it is not included in the Hope Ranch sticker price. Our next stop is the Samarkand neighborhood. Now this is down from San Roque on the other side of State Street, adjacent to the municipal golf course, Santa Barbara's golf course in the middle of town there. And uh, it's flanked by the freeway down below as you head towards the ocean. This is a kind of a little pocket neighborhood. What I like about it is it's got lots of sidewalks. It's a rolly neighborhood, unlike some of the other neighborhoods that tend to be kind of flat. San Roque, for the most part, pretty flat. The upper sections have a little bit of elevation. San Roque rolls a little bit, so you do get these random little sections that pop up and give you these views of the mountains behind us. I've even been in one house that had some views of the ocean. There's probably more than one, but one recently with really cool perspective because from over here, when you look at the ocean, Santa Barbara looks like a bay. It's really kind of cool. But other things about the San Roque neighborhood, lots of great trees. You've got good access to State Street, but even better on the back side of the neighborhood is access to the De La Vina corridor, which has become very popular with um, restaurants, Trader Joe's. You've got coffee shop over there named Handlebar that's super popular as well. So that kind of uh, business community, that little corridor is available for this neighborhood to head out to on foot. So in the morning, you wanna take a nice little walk, get a croissant and a coffee, all that's available from living right here in the Samarkand. Pretty cool little spot. All right, we are on the Mesa now. Most people who have been looking into Santa Barbara understand what the Mesa is all about. If you don't, I'm about to tell you. This is a beachy neighborhood. This neighborhood runs along the edge of the continent, basically, because Shoreline Park drops right down to the beach and then you got the Pacific Ocean. So when you're elevated up here, you're not only super close to the beach, but you also get some views. Some of these homes have really great ocean views and the Mesa is a big neighborhood, one of Santa Barbara's biggest neighborhoods. It's kind of divided into four quadrants. So you do have some upper areas with really nice views. But what I like about being down here is that you got good strikeability down to the beach. There's lots of different step access points where you could get down on the sand from up top above the bluff or just stay up top and look at the views. You might see where spouting or boats coming in it's really beautiful and the sunsets are amazing it's an active lifestyle here on the Mesa the schools are really good families love sending their kids to Washington and Monroe and McKinley they're really great options so the Mesa what else can I tell you about it you've got a great commercial district that is awesome it's got restaurants coffee shops grocery stores you could get just about anything you need if there's any downside to the Mesa, I would say that it can be a little bit tight, so neighbors can be a little bit close depending on what part of the Mesa you end up landing on. Um, it's also a premium neighborhood. It tends to be more expensive than the more starter neighborhoods. I'd say it's up there with one of the most expensive neighborhoods minus Hope Ranch, but on par with maybe like a San Roque or something like that. Um, but just a little bit of a different feeling and tapping into these microclimates, the Mesa tends to be cooler. And in the summertime when we have our June gloom, the Mesa may never get out of this gray sky that can linger over this section of town. So San Roque, on the other hand, may be in the sun, but the Mesa might be clouded over in, in overcast. So some things to think about, these microclimates happen all around town. Another great thing to understand about Santa Barbara before you choose a neighborhood, and I'm happy to explain it further and dial it in so that you become an expert. But the Mesa, I've lived here, I love it. I would love to be back one day and uh, maybe you'll find yourself here. Now we're on the west side of Santa Barbara. Started off on the east side and kind of the polar opposite is the west side. Both the west side and the east side are Santa Barbara's 
entry-level neighborhoods. That's where you'll find the most affordable single-family homes, typically starting at about $1.1, $1.2 million. So right here on the west side, I love this section of town because it has a lot of cute homes. There's a lot of bungalows that have architectural integrity that really are interesting. Um, you get some Spanish ones, some Craftsman ones, some California cottage ones, lots of trees. It has its own little commercial area on San Andreas Street, which I really like because they have some cool restaurants and they got a food land, they got kukas over there. And the west side is also divided by Carrillo. So on the other side of Carrillo, you get closer to City College. That's where it becomes a little bit more dense. You get a lot more apartments, you get a lot more student houses housing over there. This section over here tends to be a bit more single family home, so a little more privacy, but the lots are smaller on the west side. Your neighbors are closer together. There is more density. You will find that the street parking will fill up because most of the garages are one car garages and they do not have cars in them. They've got storage in them or something like that. So. The west side is uh, convenient to downtown. You do have some footbridges that take you over the 101 freeway that will get you over to State Street. So that's a nice fun walk. And you could also take yourself over towards City College and the Harbor, not too far away that way, maybe a bike ride, but those are great proximity, great things to have nearby on the west side. So the west side has this really cool commercial district full of these great local shops like this, La Bella Rosa. This bakery's been here forever. I remember living on San Andreas as a kid, coming here in the morning on the weekends to get pastries, really delicious. And then some of the newer establishments, Revolver Pizza down there, it looks like um, another Mexican restaurant just opened up that I haven't tried yet. Kuka's over there, really awesome. So earlier in the video, I was talking about how the west side has San Andreas and the east side has Melpis, but I kind of liked the San Andreas commercial district better. And this is the spot. I like this one a little bit better. It's a little more quaint, a little more intimate, and you can just roam it and really feel like you're getting to experience it. All right, everybody, we made it back to the office. I hope you enjoyed that tour. 12 neighborhoods in Santa Barbara, many of them which I've personally lived in. So if you wanna know more about any of those or learn about your journey here to Santa Barbara, I'm making this video to offer up the opportunity for you to meet me, reach out to me. I'm getting calls all the time helping people move here to Santa Barbara. That's what I love to do. That's why I'm making these videos. So don't hesitate, give me a call, shoot me a text. Let's set up an appointment, let's get together. We can meet over Zoom, whatever it is. But Thank you for watching. If you like this, please give it a like, and I am looking forward to hearing from you. Joe Parker, the Santa Barbara Group, Berkshire Hathaway Real Estate. Make it a great one, everyone. Thanks for watching.